Hey folks, uh, Mr. Bullock here, and this is a geometry review for your test on Chapter 4. Uh, so let's go ahead and begin here, you guys. So uh, first part is find the measure of the exterior angle shown. So we've got to find this measure right here. So this exterior angle is equal to the sum of these two guys. These are called the remote interior angles. So 2x minus 20 equals that x plus 60 right there. Okay, so when you solve for x, you get x equals 80. Okay, usually x is not the answer, and x is not the answer here. You've got to plug in x right here for this exterior angle. So 2 times 80 minus 20 is uh, 140. Okay, let's try another one here. Okay, find the measure of that exterior angle. Same system, you guys. You're going to go ahead and do uh, the 3x plus 6 uh, equals the 2x plus 18 plus the 24. And you can see I solve for x, and I got x equals 36. Don't forget, we got to plug it into the exterior angle. So 3 times 36 plus 6 gets me uh, 144. All right. All right, so use the third angle theorem to find the value of x. Okay, the third angle theorem is this, you guys. If you have two angles in one triangle equal to two angles in another triangle, uh, then the third pair of angles are equal, so then that's going to equal this angle right here, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, uh, since this uh, angle right here equals this angle right here, I'm just going to put a 70 in right there, okay? So if that's 70, and then uh, i got a triangle right here, which is 180, 70 plus 90 plus I need 20 more, so X must be 20 to get me that uh, 180 right there, okay? Uh, okay, this one here. All right, again, I'm just going to be using all the markings here. This, uh, this means that this one's going to be 80, and this double arc means that this double arc's going to be 45 right there. And again, so I'm going to go ahead and add them up uh, with the 5x. Uh, what did I do? Oh, I did. Uh, uh, I added these two guys together. It gets me 125, and I took that away from... Uh, from 180 because the triangle adds up to 180 so this angle must be the rest of the 180 so this 5x equals the 55 that's what I did so x equals 11 okay there's another way you can do that also you could have done 5x plus 45 plus 80 equals 180 still would have got x equals 11 okay all right uh, let's see so find the values of x and y in each okay so right here this little angle right here is going to equal this 40 right here and I'm going to use this 40 and do a little arithmetic here or subtraction actually and find out this angle's 50 because this triangle right here is 180 there's 90 right there plus 40 plus 50 right there so that's going to be 50 okay and then go ahead and set um, uh, the 17 X minus Y right here equals this 50 and then this 12 X plus 4 Y equals that right there okay so now I have a system of equations so now we're back in our algebra class I think I'm going to multiply this equation times 4 that way it gets me a negative 4y right there so I can go ahead and add them together there's other ways you can solve that system I'm choosing this way most people do alright and then when you get to take care of that you get x equals 3 and then just plug x equals 3 back into any equation I plugged it into this one right here and I got y equal 1 okay alright uh, let's try another one here okay alright this one tells me uh, that uh, this 4 x plus y right here equals this guy right here and this 6x minus y equals the 28 okay again a little bit of arithmetic 130 plus 28 plus how much more to get that little angle right there you should get uh, 22 okay so now um, the 4x plus y equals 22 and the 6x minus y equals 28 and those are ready to just add together you guys so there's the answers right there all right uh, okay, so let's try a proof here, you guys. Okay, so um, it's given that, uh, um, I'm going to go ahead and write that down here. So it's given that uh, GH, here's GH over here, is congruent to JK. So I put a dash through those. And then it's given also that HJ is congruent to KJ. So I, I put two dashes through there. Okay, and then my goal is just to get the triangles congruent. Okay, do you see the reflexive property we're going to use? We're going to say this segment equals itself by the reflexive property. So JG equals JG, or, J, or segment JG is congruent to segment JG by the reflexive property. Okay, and then those triangles are congruent by side, side, side. Okay, all three sides of one triangle are congruent to all three sides of another triangle, so the triangles are congruent by side, side, side. All right, that's a nice easy one. Wouldn't you like to have that one on your test? All right, you might. Uh, so decide whether the current congruent statement is true. Explain your reasoning. Okay, so here we go. Uh, are these triangles congruent? Well, just look at the markings right there. And that definitely, those guys are congruent by side, side, side. Okay, 
All right, and then uh, how about those guys right there? Are those guys congruent right there? Again, side, 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 because you can mark that third side right there. So I'm surprised I didn't do that. If I marked that guy, I should mark that guy. Let's see, I'll do it with three dashes. One, two, three. By the reflexive property, those guys are congruent. Okay, so side, side, side. How about those guys? Okay, again, I'm going to mark those guys in the middle. And when I mark those guys in the middle, uh, there's not enough information. Whoops, you can see. Never mind that picture down there for a second. Okay, um, and this one's angle side side. And I tell my students, don't make an angle side side of yourself. Okay, um, because you can't do angle side side. Uh, gosh, I should have drawn a picture on one of these for you to show you why. Um, angle side side does not always work. It works a lot of times, but sometimes it doesn't work. But here, see, if it was side angle side, with these two sides right there, this would have to be the included angle. And this one's not being marked. It's this one over here. It's a non-included angle. So angle side side doesn't work. Or, and I wrote side side angle right there. Side side angle doesn't work. And your books will probably write side side angle also because they don't want to write a S S. All right, anyways, okay, these guys, these guys are definite right triangles right here, but I'm just going to use the right angles to show that these angles are congruent, so I can see by side, angle, side. Can you see this is the included angle between these two guys? So these guys are definitely congruent by side, angle, side. Okay, how about uh, this guy right here? Okay, I'm going to mark uh, the reflexive property right here. All right, I don't know if I did that on this next one right here. I did, good, okay. So this one is the hypotenuse on this one and a leg, okay? So the hypotenuse is always opposite the right angle. So if it's a right triangle, that's when angle side side works, you guys. But if it's a right triangle, then it's called HL theorem, not angle side side, it's HL theorem. For the hypotenuse, this hypotenuse right here, and this hypotenuse are congruent, and then we got a leg congruent, so HL. All right, what about this one here? Okay, vertical angles are equal, so I'm going to say that angle equals that angle right there. So that one is a side angle side because this is the included angle between these two sides right here. All right, I think I have one more here. Yeah, this guy right here. What's this one right here? Yes or no? Okay, look, these guys are, are two angles, and this side is not included. The included side would be this one right here. So it's not angle side angle. This one's angle side angle side so yes it is angle angle side okay all right so i didn't say it the five ways are side 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 angle side angle side angle 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 side and hl for hypotenuse leg all right here's another proof you guys okay so what i'm going to do is get these triangles congruent you guys i'll put this down let's put let's get the markings down i'm going to use the reflexive property right there Okay, so that given right there gets me those markings right there, then a reflexive property, and then I'm going to say the top triangles can grow into the bottom triangle by side, angle, side, and then we say everything else past congruent triangles by CPCTC, which means corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Okay, there's the reflexive property. I marked it. Now I'm going to say triangles are congruent by side, angle, side. See, here's the included angle between the two sides, so it's side, angle, side. Okay, so congruent triangles by side, angle, side, and then CPCTC. Everything else is congruent, so this side right here is congruent to this side right here. Angle B also is congruent to angle D for CPCTC, okay? Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Okay, that's what that stands for. All right, hey, another proof, your favorite. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put uh, the markings down right there. Okay, uh, let's see. So, um, what did I do here? Um, so, let's see. Yep, yeah, good, I did. Okay, so I'm going to say vertical angles are congruent right here. So it looked like it was going to be HL, and I was thinking ahead, gosh, I don't remember doing HL on this, but, but vertical angles are congruent right there. So I said uh, angle... Um, uh, P, L, Q, and I had to go in the same order, so I went from the right angle to the marked angle, so I got to go from the right angle to the marked angle, so M, L, N, so that's what that says, vertical angles are congruent, then these triangles are congruent by angle, angle, side, because the side is not this one, it's not the included side, this one's angle, angle, side, so we have congruent triangles by angle, angle, side, then I can say my proof statement, Q, L, this side right here, equals NL, this side right here, by CPCTC. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Okay, having fun? I am.
All right, find the values of x and y. Okay, here I have an isosceles triangle right here. So this isosceles triangle means that these two angles are equal. Because if these two legs are equal, this is a leg, this is a leg. That means this is the base right here. So these base angles are congruent. So I'm going to go ahead and solve for x right there to get x equals 6. So it said I need to figure out uh, y also. So I'm going to plug in 6 right there, 9 times 6 plus 12. That's going to be this angle and this angle right here. So 9 times 6 plus 12, I get 66. So when you plug in 66, so 66 plus 66 plus this y right here is 180 for the whole triangle. Okay? All right, so you get 48 on that. I'm sorry, I skipped that. Okay, so here, here another isosceles triangle. This side equals this side. So these are the two legs right here. So this is the base right here. So that means these are the base angles. They're congruent. This is the vertex angle, by the way. All right, but these are the base angles, so 62 equals 2 times x plus 1. I think I distributed the 2 through. 2x plus 2 equals 62, so you get x equals 30. Okay, so I'm going to get y now. That's 62, so that's 62. So 62 and 62 and y is going to get me uh, the 180, so y is uh, 56. All right, a little bit more here. So triangle ABC has the vertices negative 5, 1 negative 4, 4, negative 2, 3. So it's asking us to sketch triangle ABC and its image after the translation. I'm going to add 5 to all the X's, add 5 to that one, to that one, to that one, and add 1 to all the Y's. So I'm going to add 1 to that one, and that one, and that one, and that's going to be my translation. Okay, so over here I added 5, negative 5 plus 5 is 0, 1 plus 1 is 2, negative 4 plus 5 is 1, 4 plus 1 is 5, and then add 5, add 1, and so here's triangle ABC, and then all these red coordinates, here's 0, 2, here's 1, 5, 1, 5, and then here's 3, 4, over 3, up 4. All right, okay, if you're in my class, I would assign that for your homework assignment. Take care, you guys.